I bomb atomically. Socrates' philosophies and hypotheses can't define why I'll be dropping these mockeries. Lyrically perform armed robbery. Flee with the lottery. Possibly the slaughter me. <laughs> That's Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> That's great, man. Thanks so much. It's probably the only lyrics I can think off at the top of my head for sure. They, well, you know, I don't force people to do it, but uh, you can pull up lyrics. You just can't pull up music. That's yeah, all. there you go. Oh, yeah. That's a trademark thing, eh? That's, well, yeah, because then they won't let us air it. That's, the, and that's the unfortunate thing. I have to clip it off, right? Because it doesn't belong to me. But what we're about to talk to belongs to me. Yeah, that's so right. I can share that and put it out there. So thanks so much for, I guess we connected through social media. Yeah, yeah. Um, a couple and, messages and on and Instagram. Then, yeah, for, and then I always, whenever someone comes out or reaches out to me, talks to me, I always make the suggestion, you want to come on the show? Come on the show. Cool, man. I appreciate so, it. Thanks yeah. for having me. So thanks so much for coming in and uh, welcome. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Uh, let me share everybody's, uh, let them know who's in here. James Andage. Uh, Andage, right? Yeah, Andage. What's, what's the background? Uh, Serbian. Serbian, okay. Uh, you can find him on IG under Andage, A-N-D-I-C-H dot Carpentry. And his phone number is 416-577-3947. I'm wearing uh, the guys out west uh, in Alberta, Calgary, I think it is. Can't remember exactly. They're a handyman, 780. That's why I wear a different t-shirt on every single show. Hey. If you take a peek underneath the table, you'll see a bunch of t-shirts. But they get shorter and shorter because as I wear one, I take it home and then I get the next one. So then we can always get a new shirt at the And then everyone's been sending me hats lately. It's free advertising. Why not? It's, it's just I, I want to do as much as I can for whoever, right? Perfect. Perfect. Are you ready to take your construction business to the next level? Consider joining the Construction Life's Tradespeople Alliance Program. TAP. Where skilled professionals connect, collaborate, and grow together. Our network is built on mutual respect and the shared goal of always building better. As a member, you'll have access to a wealth of resources designed to streamline your operations and attract more clients. From a 30-minute assessment call with myself to expert consultations in business, finance, and health, we've got you covered. Your business information will be featured at www.theconstructionlife.com, complete with certifications, logos, and geotargeting to help you reach the right audience. Promote your business with a 30-second advert across TCL social channels and our popular podcasts. Get exclusive access to TCL networking events and roundtable shows where you can connect with other tradespeople and general contractors, plus enjoy TCL merchandise, member-exclusive content, and a spot in the tab directory online. We're going to promote you guys to homeowners across Facebook groups. Don't miss out on this opportunity to elevate your business. Become a member of the Construction Life Tradespeople Alliance program today and start reaping the benefits. Visit us at www.theconstructionlife.com for more details or DM us through any of the social platforms or text me directly at 416-433-5737 to learn more and consider being a TAP member today. How young are you? I'm 28. You're a kid. Yeah, well... I'm getting to 30. I'm getting When there. did you start? Uh, I started when I was 16. I actually started in high school. Uh, Meadowvale High School, they had a thing called a high skills majors program. And it was like a construction. Yeah, it's called specialist high skills major. And they offer it to grade 11 and 12 students. It's a dual co credit co-op. So in grade 10 is where I really found my passion in woodworking at the shop. We just playing At that shop there in the school? At the school, yeah. It was just a course. I would tell my mom, you know, I'm not feeling good, but I'm going to go to wood shop. She's like, what? You want to go to wood shop? Oh, yeah. The guy couldn't get me out of the shop playing and just making furniture and Was all that. Was that the first time in your life that you actually really connected with something? Uh, yeah. Well, the construction started when I was a kid. I used to do the newspapers. Okay. And I made, I don't know, $60 a month or something like Big that. Big money back then when you were a kid. And my uncle asked me to come help him frame a deck. Pay me 100 bucks in a day. So I was like, wait. How old are you? Like you're um, four, 13, 14. I was like, hey, this is way better than doing the newspaper. You were like putting joists in and putting hangers I was, in? I was just running lumber back and forth, putting screws down for planks, just watching, really, just absorbing. Asking and a lot of questions? Always, always. I want to know what's going on. I, I want to know why I'm cutting something. I don't want to just cut it and give it to you. Why am I cutting this? Did he teach you how to read a, measure, a measuring tape? Or no, nothing like you that. You figured it out on your own? So when I went to high school, that's when they kind of, you know, the six steps of turning rough lumber smooth, reading a tape, all that. Six steps of turning rough lumber smooth? Yeah. from what are the from, six steps? Well, from rough to finish. Well, first you got to... Plain. You cut it, well, you cut it rough. Yeah. About an inch bigger on either side. You joint one, one side, one face. You plane it. Yeah. You rip it. You plane it again, or you join it again, and then you cut it to your actual size. So that's what we, that's what we started with in the shop, you know. Take these away. <laughs> don't, you know, don't get caught in a machine. No gloves. Well, there was actually a student a couple, five years prior to that no. that cut 
three fingers off in the joiner. Yeah, it's got a huge blade. I don't know how the plate piece went through. Number one rule is never put your hands in the machine. Everybody no, knows that. Never put your hand near the blade. Never. You can get a new piece of wood. You yeah. can't get new fingers. So, so he, did he have it on top he, of the wood? Yeah. Well, when the, when the joiner opened, instead of using the board to push it flat, he was just using his hand and then <laughs> tried to sue the teacher, lawsuit. It was, it was no good. But back to the high skills program, in 11 and 12, they offered a dual credit co-op. Half of it would be co-opt, and half of it we would be at the uh, middle school behind us because they used to have a wood shop. The middle school had a wood shop? Yeah, Edenwood. They used to, and they used to let the kids use it. But then what they did is they gave it over to the high school students, so the kids that were learning wood shop would get to stay in the high school wood shop. But we already knew what we were doing, so we're not going to stand in lines, wait to play and stuff. So they put us over in the other section, and it was pretty cool. We built cubbies, framed in little cubbies, did some drywall, basic electrical, plumbing, uh, painted it, put some flooring. It was a really good experience. And then we got dropped into co-ops. So, so my, different businesses here so, and there. Yeah, so my professor, his name was Mr. Rogers, shout out. He was the man. No way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alan, he was the man. He ended up setting us. He, he had a list of uh, contractors that were looking for co-op students. I mean, it's free. Right. Well, that's generally what the teachers are supposed to do. They that's, have to, that's what he was they doing. They make that grocery list of contra- businesses. Businesses, exactly. Yeah. So I ended up getting hooked up with a guy, shout out Fernando, Secret Design Renovations. Portuguese who, or Spanish? Uh, Brazilian. Close enough. <laughs> Tile. That's actually technically both. Yeah, yeah history. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can get into that too. So he, yeah, that was grade 11. I think I was 16 years old. He used to pick me up on Britannia Road if I wasn't there. But five minutes to be there or else... I'm going. It was for me to pass high school. It wasn't for him. It was he was me. doing you a favor. He was doing me a favor. So yeah. all of grade... And you knew that. And all of grade 11, we, I would go to job sites. He was a tile guy by trade, but did a little bit of everything. I mean, you can't have a plumber to do every bathroom. Gonna move a valve here. Can't have an electrician to put in one pot light. So he was very good. Took me under his wing, and I was still in school at that point, so I could only work... So you did six months with him? I did six months. Well, it would be two week pockets at a time. You'd go two weeks of co-op, then go back to school for two weeks, back into the shop. Then two weeks back of co-op, back to the shop. And I really, I really enjoyed it. It was real fun. Grade 12 got no more co-op, but just straight trades. And I was kind of honing in. You want to do electrical? You want to do plumbing? You want to do HVAC? Figure out what you want to do. Kind of, yeah, kind of yeah. narrowing it down. And it was, a, it was an awesome experience. I learned a ton, and that's kind of what got me going into into where I am now. Do the you you bring up a really good point about the high schools and I don't think I see this in the high schools with the workshops. Why don't they educate the kids well enough to start building a bunch of things that the school needs? Well, that was that's funny enough too. One of our projects was we re landscaped the whole front of the school. Flagstone walls. We we They had the classroom doing it? Yeah, we did it. Were you guys paid? No. Oh, no, of course not. We're in grade 12. <laughs> we also built a Hardscape shed. and shrubbery and Sh- yeah, uh, grading. We, yeah, grading because there was a, we call it the smoker's pit. It came down here and it had two these two little side things. They were all beat up and people would drive their bikes on them and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we just ripped it all out, put planters, did a flagstone, built them in the back first, numbered all of them. So when we came out, we knew what we were but doing. See, do you see the possibilities with this? Oh, that if you huge. had a workshop in a high school oh, and you huge. got the kids and you educated them so much that they could start building professional things. Absolutely. The Catholic high school, not too far from me, got rid of all of it. Got rid of their auto shop and got rid of their wood shop. I mean, our auto shop in my school was amazing. I still remember everything that guy taught me. I know how to do all my oil changes just see, from would, that guy. I wouldn't have a problem if I was a teacher or if I was a vice principal. I wouldn't have a problem with the auto shop building customized cigarette dispensers of some sort well i had a buddy of mine that got suspended for building a bat he was turning it on the lathe and he gets suspended for building a bat out of ash or what did he make it could have been an mlb bat it was a nice one and he gets suspended for it he got suspended yeah well there's other kids kids would make swords like i mean it is a piece of wood but i mean at the end of the day blacksmith no no no, like on a lathe yeah like like like, 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 like spinning them on a lathe and just grinding you don't suspend the kid for that some people would make bowls some people make bowls some people want to make swords right it's just it's kind of it's kind of the personality right but what we did do for one uh teacher actually we built him a shed we built it in the shop all prefab, like how you see these modu- modular homes now. Built. Disassembled it, brought it to his house. Brought it to his house in Streetsville. Reassembled it. Put it in the backyard, put it on, roof and everything. I don't know if he paid for the material. Did, I would think so. Did you guys get paid for that? Oh, of course not. 
Hey. So do you see where the possibility is here? Oh, for sure. But it was awesome. I mean, you go to school. I got a couple of my buddies. They're going to math class, and they're sitting there. We're jumping in our cars. We're driving over to Streetsville, and we're putting together a shed. Like it was, it was awesome for I me. Like, I loved it. I feel like I want to start like Shawshank High School, man. Yeah, like you just start building shit. Well, That's you can all. Start breeding. You guys are all inmates, and just like you have the tools there, you start building shit. And no, I'm telling no you, the choice. teachers will come all out of the woodwork to start putting orders in. Can you? I got. Can you? It's, it was it was fun. I, I really did enjoy. And then it. what you would learn, man, and then you would encourage the school system and also the board system to start buying more tools and yeah. more ideas. Yeah. Well, I mean, other than my teacher, Mr. Rogers, I never had a teacher say, get into the trades. My fam- None of my family Only are in Mr. trades. Only Mr. Rogers did that. Only because he was. He used did to he wear a sweater? No. No, no, no. no. <laughs> he actually used to, be a, used to be a plumber. Ran a, ran a decent so company. He knew, that he knew his stuff. He knew what he was talking about. He just got out of it. Father died. Him and his brother went together. Mm-hmm. Brother shows up at 11 o'clock. Oh, I actually have to go to the dentist today, too. It's like, man. You can't run a business like this. No. You got to know this beforehand. So he got out of it and became a teacher. Don't need a degree to be a trades teacher. No. No. Just need to have qualifying skills. You need to know. But unfortunately, there's a lot of teachers that have the teacher credits. That take those spots. Exactly. Yeah, my whole family's teachers and police officers. So nothing, no construction on my side. You're the only one? Uh, My middle brother is a plumber now. Yeah, he's in his fourth year. But they do a... Uh, they work for a company called Piperight Mechanical. They're out in, out in Hagersville. Okay. And, uh, but they do high, high-end plumbing. You're talking heated driveway systems. Yeah. Boiler melts. Good stuff. The, yeah. Like, I'll ask them to hook up a drain for me. Like, are you kidding me? They don't want to do it? Can't, can't put the trap together? Then they make will. it heated if They you will. <laughs> they will, but it's like, come on, man. If for real, you need me for this? But, hey, they're... He could FaceTime you and walk you through it. You do it. Yeah, actually, my brother went over there to Sheridan at that, that campus right there where he got his, started his... You know how many times here. I call a lot of people that have been on the show or a lot of people that I used to work with on my sites? I just call them up going, listen, walk me through this, man. FaceTime me. I'm going to FaceTime. Just walk me through. I don't need a service call. Just walk me through. No. And what, then what's I going on here? It. That's all it is. Simple all it is. that, man. Sometimes they just need to look at it. Something, sometimes it's something simple. And I realized that now being on my own for a bit. But what really got me started was when I graduated... High school. I went to George Brown for three years. The construction course. Yeah, construction uh, management, reno- renovation, technology. Okay, yeah, yeah. And it was. And you a, went there for three. It was a three. So you did the whole thing. Yeah. So there was an option for two, and there was an option for three. Yeah. And during that process, my dad made me go to the home show. Before before I got into college, just finishing high school, kind of knew what I wanted to do. But so before your first year of college, you go to the home show. I go to the home show. The hundred. Why did he want you to go to the home show? Because he wanted me to get my feet wet. Wanted me to get into the industry, see what was going on. And I thank him a lot for that because I gave out a hundred resumes. I got ninety nine no's, but I got one yes. Who was the yes? Is uh, it's a company called the Gaddy Brothers. Tony and Joe. Yeah, they've been. Tony's been on the show, and Tony and Joe are going to both come back. They were scheduled last week to come back, but oh. then they got busy on site. Oh, for sure, they're and, always. And then they said, "Listen, we'll have to reschedule." Man, I was going, dude. You just tell me when. Uh, just as long as Tony, tell your brother he's got to sing because you, you one of you guys got to sing. Simple as that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, they're good guys. They're <laughs> no, solid they're, guys. They're, they're yeah. awesome. So, so they said yes to you. They said yes what to a me. Small world. Huh? He was um, actually building a, a house in Streetsville, not too far from. Yeah, they're where, Mississauga based. So where I was living. I was also going to school. I wanted to do this. And Tony said, hey, why not? Let's put two and two together. So I was actually just a laborer for Tony at the beginning. They were out in Etobicoke doing projects. He would keep me on site at the Streetsville House. And I met this old carpenter, Carmelo, this tall, funny guy, but sharp as a bat. How old was he? When he retired, he was 80. Whoa. 80s? 80? You met him at what age? When I was 18, when he first looked at me, he looked at me, he goes, holy shit, I've been doing this for 50 years. He goes, I was doing this when I was 80. And he just had a flashback. But the first thing that guy ever did, we were on the foundation of this house. He's got the plans. And he goes, this roof won't work. Roof he won't looked work. at the drawings and automatically? He knew right away. It was all hand cut. Ridges, valleys, dormers. He goes, these two dormer walls got to come down about a foot and a half. These, these pitches won't go together. We get up on the roof and he's cutting the dormer walls down to get the roof slopes together. I said, buddy, you could tell me to start at the roof, and I'd believe you on a new house and come down, even though you can't. But it didn't matter. This guy was a wizard. How many years did you have with him? I saw after, so I was going to college for three years, and I would come work on Mondays 
or whatever day I had off, I remember his reaction. I go, hey, Pops, can I come work on Mondays? He goes, why? You want to work on Monday? Like, yeah, I got a day off from school. He goes, okay, come. So I go to college. We're putting sill plates down. I mean, on the job, we're getting ready to do a first floor. I go to college. Hey, we're talking about sill plates. We're talking about Joyce. And I'm going, I just did this. <laughs> but, it's, but, it's, but it's good that I watched it because now I'm learning the theory of it. Why yeah. I'm putting the gasket down. Yeah. Why the bolts got to be so far apart. Why you can't tighten them all the way because they're Anything never. Anything contradict? What um, Car, Car, uh, Car, oh, sorry. Carmelo. Carmelo, yeah. What Carmelo was yes. teaching you versus what school was teaching you? Yeah, the, on the tools, you can't learn that at the school. There's too much liability. I mean, you go to cut a piece of wood with a skill saw. I will disagree with you that. Know, I, I think an individual student needs to pass a test to make sure that they understand, respect the tool. So even I'd be in the corner of the shop, you know, hanging the two by four off my foot, cutting them, cutting blocks, and the teacher goes, hey, I know you're good with the saw, but don't do that here. Because these other kids are going to try to do it and then cut the feet off. I'm going, ah, man. Like, cutting a two by four with a skill saw, you got to have two hands on the saw and you got to have somebody holding the piece for you. Yeah, I've heard about this That's, where but, you're cutting a two by four off of saw horses. Yeah. I get it. I, yeah. Or you could put it on the ground, hang it off the foot. I like, know. They don't want you to cut it off the foot. They don't want you to do I that, know. right? So tools wise, very, I mean, some of these kids are very good at theory but horrible on the tools, but they pass as well, right? So it's uh, like- They're gonna be engineers. Maybe, <laughs> possibly, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, because the workmanship was no good, but <laughs> it just, on if you wanted to learn scheduling, budgeting, reading drawings- That's what I've heard. It's really good for that. That was the great part so about school. you wanna school. be a project coordinator, you wanna get on the high rise, big corporation, exactly. it's great. If you wanna I do could, custom construction, it was, yeah. There's was, a disconnect slightly. There's, it, it, there is. But what was great for me was I could watch the old man look at the plans and go, oh, you need two by eight headers there. You need two by tens there. And I'm going, how does he know this? And then I go to school and I'm seeing the schedules. I'm going, ah, that's how he knows this. So I was kind of catching on and I was understanding what was going on. And it was great. I worked for him. I graduated college, worked for him for four years. He retired. He's part of Gaddy? He, no, no, no. No, it's no. a different he, building. He, he, he framed for Gaddy a couple of times. Yeah. You ever joke with him and say, listen, when you started construction, was it all boulders? <laughs> I used to think he used to <laughs> hand screw in. Well, he used to tell me just hand nail and everything. Well, hand nail for sure. Hand nail everything. Hand nail for sure. Because he'd watch us with the gun and he'd lose his mind. Yeah. He'd be like, two nails, two nails. This guy's shot firing five. Two nails. <laughs> Hit you on that with the square. Back of the head. Hard hat, though. Well, that was, uh, it, was really, it was really awesome. But he was open to teaching you a bunch of tricks? He was. I'll never forget. One time he just let me struggle for 45 minutes. What we were you had, trying to figure out? We were framing exterior walls. We weren't using sheathing. We were using those stupid wind braces, those metal. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Because we used the styrofoam on top. Yeah, the, the, the walls, I, hate, I hate that. They got no lateral strength. Yeah, like I hate this. that. So you, you put the wall, you put the bracket down, know, trace it, I set know, the saw. And you put the stupid XPS foam on it. I so get it. What I did was I didn't square the wall first before I put the brace in. And I'm over there. I'm hitting it this way with the sledge. I'm hitting it that way with the sledge. I'm just, the numbers won't add up corner to corner. He comes over to me and goes, take the brace out. I'm like. <laughs> so for 45 minutes, you were fighting he, it? Well, yeah, because he let me. Because then I realized I'm never doing that again. Now I know what not to do. And he would just sit there and laugh. And it's just, it was good. Because that's how you learn. You yeah. learn by fucking up. Yeah. And that's, that's the best way. That's the best way to do it. You could tell somebody how to do things all the time. But until you get into it and you go, wait, why is that like that? Or I cut everything the same, but now they're growing or they're shrinking. Like, what is going on here? Maybe the wall's out of level. Maybe the floor's out of level. When it comes to spray foam and blown in insulation for your next project, there's no better team than Mohammed and his crew at Fomit. With well-educated, skilled installers, Fomit doesn't just get the job done. They do it right. They take the time to properly estimate and educate you on every aspect of your project, ensuring your building envelope is airtight and energy efficient. As leaders in the industry, they bring a deep understanding of building science to every job, making sure your project stands the test of time. But don't just take their word for it. Past clients constantly praise the quality of work and professionalism of the Fomit team. From homeowners to large-scale contractors, feedback has been overwhelmingly positive, with clients appreciating their attention to detail, the thoroughness of their crew, and the results that speak for themselves. At Fomit, they pride themselves on building lasting relationships through exceptional service, reliability, and the commitment to exceeding expectations on every single project. Whether you're insulating a new build, upgrading an older property, or tackling a commercial project, Fomit is your trusted partner in achieving energy efficiency and comfort. 
They understand the importance of getting it right the first time. And that's why so many clients return to them for future projects. Connect with FOMIT today. Reach them at 416-893-8712 or 647-961-9777. Email them at mohammed at fomit.ca or visit them at www.fomit.ca. Follow them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn to see their latest projects and innovations. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. Why do you think he was so receptive to you or to teaching you? Because well, you're much younger, right? Yeah. And obviously he has a painted picture of the younger generation coming up. I'm not. I'm actually not too sure. We're, weirdly enough, when I went to college, I stopped working for him and I was just working for Tony. Okay. And I was actually framing roofs at that point. And I used to work at No Frills. During college, I was at college, I was doing construction and No Frills. I'm, I'm stocking the shelves. Carmelo's standing there shopping. I didn't know he lived around me. I didn't know anything. I'm like, hey, Pops, how do I cut this hip? How do I take the calculation? He goes, is that what you're doing in school? I go, yeah. He goes, ah, just come work with me, man. All right. And then from there, he just, it doesn't matter what. And he was very nice, too, because if he would know something's a little sketchy, like, you don't go up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't do that. Yeah. You, you'd stay down here with me. And then he would go? Oh, no, he'd, his son worked with us. We had okay. two other guys, too, as well. So yeah. they, would, they would go up there and do the sketch stuff. Until I got a little bit older and made some more money, and then you had no choice. Get to it. So how was it when you finished school, and now you're in the real world? Um, it was... You finished school, and you got a certificate, you got a diploma, you got, got a diploma. You got and all of a sudden, you're out in the real world now. Um, it was a lot of... Well, it was all unionized at that point. So I didn't, there was no, it was show up to work, the lumber's there, and get to work. No. Unionized framing? Yes. Subdivision or high yeah, rise? No, sub, subdivision. All subs. All subs. All subs. How was that? Um, Monotonous? Good and bad. Good and bad. What we really had a problem with was we put a lot of effort into our houses. We transit the first floor. We get everything level. We get everything straight. The guy beside you builds a piece of shit. You both get paid, though. You're both making the same you get money. The same money. You get the same money. It doesn't matter about the time or the how, effort how that much, you put how in. How much faster did he finish versus you? Well, it depends on the builder. The last one we did, we were putting Joyce on 12, 12 inch centers. The guy across the street from me is doing 24 inch centers. I put 80 Joyce in the house, you put 40. He's using inch thick plywood, though. I'm using 5 8 So the, the cost would, of lumber <laughs> is down. The labor's down, but you just up the plywood. Yeah, but the deflection's up on the 24. Oh, the deflection's sure. down on the 12. For sure. Well, it depends. Which builder you want to buy from? Some of them have figured it out well. Some of them know how to, you know, how to save. Yeah, building homes 24 on center just to go with a one-inch TNG board? I never did. I never worked for that builder. That makes Ours no were sense. always 16s or 12s, but some of them are, t well, look at interior walls. 24 inch, 19.2. Yeah, I know they do that. Well, it's still, well, I mean, you put five up, 500 houses up I, and you save it. 30 studs a house it's plus an, the labor. It's, it's a numbers game. It is, exactly. but it's all a numbers game. It's not a quality game. It's a, how fast can you go? How fast can but we get the, these But up? here's the thing though, James, is that you're still charging the client the same amount of money, whether you're building on 12 or 24. Of course. So that means the builder's pocketing that extra difference. Of course they are. Yep. Especially with lumber prices going well, they're always going up, but during the years, well, they were going up crazy. So then I, I'm sure that just got ramped up to more builders doing that yeah, that way. Yeah, well, it even gets, they get, when COVID happened and pieces of sheet and OSB was 120 something dollars, we were drywall. We were using drywall. You were using drywall to sheet the exterior? Brown stuff, brown drywall. I, I mean, know what you're talking about. That's, never, that's old school 80s shit. I, I thought it gives I thought, you no I thought rigidity. was going to be coming back. <sighs> I thought I thought we were going to get the old stuff, some melamine, some garbage. Because with the old man, we did it all: foam, sheathing, melamine, whatever. But when COVID happened, it was drywall, brown drywall. Talking like million dollar houses, sheathed with drywall. What they don't see, just, they don't know. And if it rains for a week, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You think I could put no, my hands no, around the house? Eights, don't worry, it's, it's thicker than. Yeah, you just. It's an arrow bar. It's got more air in it. That's all it is. That's it. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it, it, it was, the union was good to learn. How long were you there for? I was in the union for five years. That's a long time. Well, before that, I was still working with them, but I wasn't part of them yet. You know what I mean? I was still in school. I wasn't full time. I didn't have the, enough hours to become a member or pay the dues. It's like seven, eight hundred bucks just to join. Yeah. And then, then 30, oh, it's probably in the forties now of monthly dues to get these guys but it's like 
you know, you go to the dentist and you got to pay up front. You got to wait a month or two to get the lady at the dentist going, this is old technology. What's up with these guys? Why don't they have anything direct deposit anymore? What's going on here? It's just old, old, old ways of doing stuff. They don't care. You fall off the roof. There's another guy that'll take a job. They don't give a shit. That's the union of today. Today, yes. The union wasn't always that way. No, but it's, I mean, it is what it is. It's great for guys. Guys, I have my best, one of my best buddies. He's a framer still. We used to work together. He's in the union still? Yeah, he's still in there. He loves it? Two kids. Was he? Yeah, he loves it. Secu- exactly. So he understands every week, this is what I get. This is what I can build. This is what I can grow. Let's say every month he gets paid, finishes the house a month, maybe a guy or two. But the thing is, it's, well, he's up north hunting. He hasn't worked in four weeks. There's no houses. And if he's not building houses... Union today is different. It's getting dicey over there. So where are you? So how long ago is this now? You leave the union five years. How far back now? I that's just, uh, 2019, right at COVID. Recently, it's right when I started my own gig. So, okay, so and you start your own gig now? Yes, yes. So and it's carpentry is my co- my company. Yeah, and so how's that out of the gate? You you start basically at the beginning of COVID now, which yeah. is good because a lot of people were doing that. Yeah, it was. It started off great. Uh, busy because that's how you start all your you have a ton of side work side work just becomes you advertising you're promoting much. you're marketing or just word of mouth a lot, a lot of word of mouth it's, yeah it's a lot of word of mouth i mean somebody has a party at their kitchen oh who did this this looks great yeah. and then it just and it just rolls like that and it's all about relationships and and being good with people and understanding and challenging them because not always what they say is right and, you know you're hiring me for a reason so let's you know obviously i mean any you, anything can be done just cost money it's true. So yeah. it was it was rough at the beginning, especially the prices of material. Nobody wanted to pay for nothing. They wanted you to lower your price to offset the cost of the material. Meanwhile, lumber suppliers, um, the executives attached to them were becoming millionaires of overnight. Of course they were. I should have invested in softwood and lumber. Uh, well, there's a lot of people that did invest because they already knew that that shit was coming down yeah. the pipe and they were enjoying it. So it's kind of funny. Did you have clients look at you like you're too young to be doing this? I have had that a couple times where you talk to them on the phone, you meet them at their house, they go, I wasn't expecting Is your boss coming? I wasn't, ex- yeah, I wasn't <laughs> expecting this. So it, I, what I, because on my own, I used to do, just do a bunch of renovations at my house. I ripped apart my bathroom. Yeah, that's did how the, you did the kitchen. That's how you practice. Did the stairs, and it's the best place for me to practice. Yep. Worked with a great tile guy. I mean, hanging plywoods, like hanging drywall. Not very, not a, I'm a decent taper, but not something I, I, I strive to do. So I thought to myself, you know what, let's stay in the framing and the finishing industry, kind of general contracting as well. So a lot of my, some of my jobs for private customers will be like a kitchen rental, a bathroom, a basement, or I'll get calls from contractors. Hey, can you take this bearing wall out for me? Uh, after you want to do the doors, you want to do the base, oh, we need some crown. So those for me are nice because they're in and outs, not there for two months, hanging out, waiting and waiting like a basement. You, know? you like it that way? Like you like getting all these calls for these little, like here's a day, here's two days, here's a week. I would, well, I would rather stay fully booked. Like I love doing the bigger projects. I actually just got a call today. Guy wants to take the roof off the garage, put a second floor on. Great. That, that would be an awesome gig, but they don't, they don't come as often as I would like. Like framing wise, I've only framed one custom in the last four years, and it's for my cousin hmm. up in Tiny. Because you can't get the clients. They're just they're just tough. How how often do you find people that want to build their own homes? No, the right it's, now it's it's getting tight right now. It's right? tight. So I'll stick to when I first started. I dig you a hole. You want a hole, Doug? I'll dig you a hole. You don't want to do it? I'll do it. Now I'm kind of staying away from little stuff. Like I had a guy call me. Hey, can you put new fence posts in for me? Just the posts? Yeah. No. There's a company that'll do. You that. want me to build the fence? Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to do the hardest part and then not you get do the, the reward easy part. Yeah, I know. that's not going to work. When I was a kid in 2019, I'd do it. Yeah, but you don't but need as, to do it now. As you grow, no, yeah, I don't. And I you don't can find it. somebody that will do it for some stupid price at 50 yeah. bucks a post or something. And right? one of the my bro, my oldest brother, he's a police officer, actually over here, over here in Halton. He uh, bought a place in Hamilton, old, 120 years old, and we gutted it right to the bones. And our our, our idea was to. Buy, sell, flip, rental, but the but the prices right now. The Insane. M- the mortgage. Hamilton's getting nuts. Oh my god. Hamilton's been getting nuts for five years. I mean, he bought this place downtown. We're talking downtown. Five hundred and fifty thousand a couple years ago. What is it, twelve, thirteen hundred square feet? It is it's a Victorian, 
It's three oh, story. It's three story. Yeah, it's go- gorgeous. So this is a big house. Oh yeah, it's sweet. We made it. You guys got the whole thing. Oh, oh yeah, it was double brick. It cost you five hundred. No, no, the house was purchased for five hundred. Rental cost was about one hundred and seventy five thousand because we went to the we went to the tits. Like I said, spray foamed. All, all knob and tube gone, cast iron gone. But did you keep it all true to its essence, or did you just modernize it and bring in the trunk? We, we, mo- we, modern, we modernized it. Like, okay. I kept some of the old hardwood flooring that I could find with the walnut inlays around yeah. the side. I left the old uh, the old tile, the hearth right by the uh, fireplace. Yeah. Uh, exposed all the Generally, double. like, four by four inch terracotta tile They're, or something? They, these ones are, like, weird. They're, like, long strips, small. They have, like, a weird border. Glazed? Oh. Uh, glazed, yeah. Yeah, okay. I've seen I can those. find a picture somewhere in yeah, there. Yeah, right, I've it. seen them. And then, uh, yeah, double br- uh, party wall was plastered, exposed it all brick, just sitting there for two days, grinding, grinding, grinding. But it turned out it was a gorgeous. It's a gorgeous house. You got it appraised for one point three million. Did so you guys sell it? He's still in it now because Louis Vuitton's actually building a condo just up the street. Really? On um, Cannon and John Street. I know what you're talking about. Just when you come off York. They're building how many floors of the it's condo? It's pretty big. It's furnished by Louis Vuitton. Sorry. It's not being built by Louis Vuitton, but they're, they're gentrifying that area. So it's furnished by furnishings that are built in China by Louis Vuitton and for, then parked in Hamilton, Ontario. Yeah. For slave for slave That's not wages. being said in the marketing literature, by the way. Of course not. But that's exactly the factual behind it. That's exactly <laughs> what's going on. So he's going to hold on to that until that condo building goes up. Because it's just going to make his place skyrocket. I wouldn't want my condo to look like a store. Yeah, legit. Who, 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 can, who would even want to live in a condo? I was just at an event there, and I saw, like, Versace tile, and I was like, yeah, no, thank you. Well, that's... Uh, the, it that, had the name Versace on it. I was like, I don't want that. I'm and, sorry. And I've learned that hard running my own businesses. What kind of tile you want? Because that one thing I won't do with my bathrooms is I try not to buy the finishes anymore. Let them. Because I got, I got hose one time on it. Because my high end and her high end were not the same thing. And it's like, well, if you want to spend twenty five hundred dollars on a rain head, that's up to you. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, I'm going to give you a decent brand, a mowing, something with a lifetime warranty, something you can get cartridges that are available. You want the thing from Italy? We're, we're, we're now the plumber's got to go buy new nipples and stuff because the threads aren't the same. That's a you buy it. Those are conversations that clients never realize. Oh eh? no, no, it's like the vanity. Those MPTs are like you know they don't Europe and they, and Canada North two they're different, different worlds, they're man. Two different stuff. And even I won't install Amazon fixtures. People want good. these shower good or Wayfair. No way. You start putting clauses in your contract, going, "You guys take full responsibility if there's any defects, return what policies. What am I going to do? Installation issues. It's all on you guys it's now. All it has nothing you. to do with me." And that's one thing I, I go to my public supplier. I'll get the products that I know that will. And are a decent price. Mm-hmm. We're not. We're, and then like tile, you could spend $20 on tile. You could spend two bucks on tile. Clients just want to show off. Well, that's all it is. That's it's all, it all look is, what, man. well, that's everybody. It's all, look what I drive. Look what I'm drinking. <sighs> Buying stuff they can't afford to impress wanna, people they don't like. I want a bathroom that's going to last and that's, that's not going to discolor. I want a bathroom that's going to be functional and still beautiful. Of course. But I don't want a bathroom that everyone, like you show it off for the sake of that. You just did it for the sake of showing off. That's not a bathroom. No, right? that's not. And, but that's what people like to do. They like to, they like to show off. They, they buy things they can't afford to impress people they don't like. Uh, that's that's one of the nature, oldest. Simple as that. That's, that's what it is. So how many people you got working with you now? Uh, right now, it's just me and one guy. Did Small. you go back to the high school to ask to see if there's any protégés there? I am going back, actually. They asked me to go back and just talk to the kids. Good. Because, well, because they're... I've done that before. Well, yeah. I mean, the teachers are a little older. The, the, the students are like, well, what did you do 20 years ago? What did you do? So he goes, you know, let me bring guys that are that graduated from this program that are now doing their own you thing. You can connect better. And you yeah. can come, like a buddy of mine, he's a heavy machine operator. He uh, forklifts, excavators, whatever. He's going to come with me. Another buddy that's a plumber that was in that program, he's going to come with me. I found a lot of my age group... I'm born in 1996. A lot of us are filtering into the trades. I don't know. It's because we don't like sit at a desk or because I got a lot of buddies that are in the trades, but they're all plumbers, electricians or heavy machine operators. Very few recession proof, very few bricklayers, very few tapers. Because it's too hard. Very few painters. Yeah. Seasonal. It sucks. Winter harshness. Oh, it sucks. Mm, Good money. Great money. But a lot of risk though. Yeah. There's also more risk. Yeah. But. HVAC, electrician, plumber, recession proof. Yeah. 
you'll never be affected. It's nice. Right. If you're smart and set up everything, if you want to be custom guys, or if you want to be union guys or high rise guys, it's, it's recession proof. Yeah, it's true. You don't have to worry about whatever the economy is doing. No. Well, you're more on the custom side and that's why it's a little more challenging and you get clients that are like far and few. They're all worried about their lines of credit. They're all worried about their mortgage renewals. They have to factor all that shit in. Yeah, and it all it all costs money at the end of the day. Doesn't it doesn't matter what you want to do. If you just want somebody to come take a look at your project, they probably should charge you. They're not going to on the spot, but if they get the job, there's probably going to be a couple hundred in there for that meeting and that estimate. And because it all takes time, man, you got to drive, you got to put gas, you got to pay insurance, you got to go. I mean, I've been on projects all the time that I never get a call back ever. I'm like, man, that took me two days to put that together. That was thoughtful. That was. Go and cover on off all CYA. Cover your ass. He used to have that on all my George Brown tests. Was that acronym? An old old teacher of mine. She used to say CYA on every project. You got to cover your ass. Protect your investment one drop at a time. Your home or project deserves the very best when it comes to waterproofing. Trust nothing less than the service that guarantees you peace of mind and lasting protection. Meet Antonio, the expert behind Aquastop Waterproofing. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to keep your basement dry or a contractor in search of a reliable partner, Antonio and his skilled team deliver unparalleled quality and service. From the first site assessment to the final backfill, every detail is handled with precision, ensuring your project is completed on time, on budget, and to the highest standard. Antonio's team doesn't just solve problems, they prevent them. With a proven track record of working with insurance companies, educating clients, and using the best products available, Aquastop Waterproofing offers a solution you can depend on for years to come. Experience the difference with a team committed to excellence. Antonio and Aquastop Waterproofing are your go-to professionals for all things waterproofing. Get in touch with Aquastop Waterproofing today at 647-631-4144 or visit them at www.aquastopwaterproofing.ca. For direct inquiries, email Antonio at antonio at aquastopwaterproofing.ca. Let's make sure your property stays safe and sound, rain or shine. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. You young guys, you guys ever worry that prospecting clients or clients that you finished a good job with will start talking shit in review land online? Well, that's... That's one thing I'm kind of shying away from with getting the website or getting the Google reviews because I know they can be taken down. And I mean, I haven't had a project where I had to run away from or lose my shirt on. So most, I, I would say if I was to do one of those review pages, I think I wouldn't get too much, you know, heat back from people. But then again, you get somebody that doesn't like you. If make a couple. They're making up they shit. Make, they make a couple different accounts and then they're blowing it up on your, on your site and you're going, ah, fuck. Who's this? Who is this guy? I never did a job for this guy. Who knows? He's made four different accounts and he's just giving you one stars. And but it's funny that clients will take that as religion. Eh? They'll read some review. They don't know what this person is. They don't know what the three versions of the stories are. They don't know anything about that. They just read that negative review. And I'm like, then, you know what? In all fairness, I tell people that's not the client you want to work with. No. Because if that's their mindset, that's how they educate themselves regarding hands-on construction work then that's not the client you want to work with. No. They're going to be trouble from day one. No, and you can get, and I've gotten good. Fernando, my buddy that I first worked with, was very good at vetting people. He could see it as they're doing the meeting. He could tell. He walks out this house, he goes, oh, this is going to be a fun one. You know, wife's this, that, that husband's in the back, not saying a word. You're like, oh, well, we see where this is going. And I already know, or they can't make up their mind. Oh, I want this tile. No, I want this tile. I go, listen, when you guys figure it out, I'll come back. Yeah. I'm not sitting here. I'm not... I'm not Dr. Phil. I'm not doing the council thing no. here. You guys figure it out, and then I'll come back. But with the reviews, it's, I, I don't think I would hire somebody not... I don't know if I would necessarily read the Google review, but I'd find other trades that worked with them and say, hey, how is this guy? Is he, you know, is he punctual? Does he show up? Does he say he's going to be there when he's going to be there? Something that drives me nuts is you do a basement, customer goes, oh, my brother-in-law is an electrician. He's going to do the wiring. You go, okay, is he going to... I never allowed that, eh? I did once until I show back up and there's just beers in the corner. I know. Two weekends later. I you're know. You're killing my timeline now, dude. My guy would have had this done in two days. That's why I've never so allowed it. Now I learned. Never. But the economy not. dictates to a lot of young tradespeople to allow it. Yep. Because they're trying to get as much work as possible. And you want. You but don't it's going to affect your business. And then guess what? Your client's going to. 
blame you more than the person that they recommended and brought in. Exactly. Even though they're at fault. Exactly. But you're by proxy at fault. Exactly. Primarily. Oh, well, yeah. That's why I never allowed it. I go, you want to do this? And that's, you do this rental then. You think it's that easy? Then you do it. Yeah. Everybody thinks that they can do it because they've been online. They watch the TV. Oh, you get, and they, they know it. You get, uh, I, I do it, but I don't have enough time. So yeah, that old yeah, bullshit. Yeah. I know. Okay. You do it because you don't have a skill. Yeah. You don't have enough skill. It's not time. So you don't know what's going Wrong on. Wrong word. You have no idea what's going on. That's that's the thing. You got to know in all stages. And you got to be able to see stuff. Because I do a lot of my finishing work, I can see things. You go, how, how's that? how are we going to trim that out? There's not enough space here for trim. This has to come over a bit. Or this has to go that way. Yeah. Or we're ripping a piece and we're doing something funky here. Yeah. Like I'm always thinking about, how's this going to be finished? Because I'm the one that's going to have to finish it. So it's, I'm always ahead, keeping my mind. I know, but most guys have blinders, right? Well, King, it's, Jack, it's, header, done. It's in and out. <laughs> That's the problem. They're in and out. So it's, they, they show up. Oh, I'm just here to frame. They do something like in the union. You got back framers. Like, what is that? There's a whole crew to fix things that you guys missed. There's guys to build bulkheads. There's guys to build corner stuff. Because they would rather us go onto the new house and start getting the floor ready. So after the plumber's done and they've insulated the corner and they put the plastic, then the guy comes back and builds the box or goes under the stairs or puts toilet paper backing. Like, what a choke. We could do that. There's companies that set up. It would take us four all, hours to do the whole thing. All the, all the deficiencies. Yeah, and bring handy, handyman in. <sighs> On brand new house, I can't tell you how many houses, even when me and my buddy would frame, we would just stand back. The best thing the old man ever taught me was, if it looks fucked up, it probably is. <laughs> and it was great. That applies to everything in life. I'm telling you, because you just, all you need to do is stand back. You could be on like a porch, building a porch roof or something. You know this thing's not, you can't really get it perfectly square. But you stand back and it looks good. That's it. But if it looks crooked or it looks fucked up, it, is. it probably is. So it was always <laughs> the best just to stand back and take a look. Sometimes, you, you know, you think everything's right. And then you're like, why does that look crooked? Get over there, tap it a bit. And there's a reason. There's a reason, right? So, but also, like you said, the flip side. If it's good, it looks good. It's probably good. That's it. So some of these houses, you'd see porches like this. Oh, you'd man. see it drives me crazy. You'd have a gable here with the window offset. You're talking it four bricks me, on one side, two bricks on the other side, and it's like who? Where's the quality it's, control? I Where? don't care Wednesdays. I don't care Fridays. I don't care. Pick the day of the week. No, man. I'm telling you, I had a, time. I don't care Saturdays. I don't give a shit. I had a second story. Exterior walls are done they, they, uh, with the telehandler. They bring the stack of lumber right on the second floor. I'm picking up this. I'm like, this feels light. I break the straps. I put the window. I put the two by four in the window sill. I step on it. Snaps? Right in half. I weigh like a buck fifty-five, buck sixty. So I call the super. I go, these things are all rotten. You know what he tells me? They're cosmetic. What do you mean they're cosmetic? They're, co they're interior walls. The cosmetic, the trusses don't bear on the interior walls. They bear on the outside. I said, buddy, you want me to build a house with these rotten studs? Somebody's going to mount the picture. It's not going to fall off. It's going to slide through because there is nothing in these studs. You know what I did? Built the house, rotten, second floor studs. I had no choice. Well, that's the material you're supplying. Yeah. Your job is not about finding the material. Your job is put about them, cutting them, and Put the members material. together. Put the members together. And even then, sometimes you'd get from the lumber yard you get a stack of lumber and nobody ever talks about century homes anymore oh they're in a new home today they're great century i think those old century homes, demos that's what they're going to be central demos yeah that's what they're going to be well it's because we build with paperback materials now build with crap we, we build, build with, with a paper. bunch of shit we that we shouldn't paper. be yeah we like there's but it's being pushed by the government and it's being pushed by the green police yeah, and it's being pushed by people that don't understand construction. It's all greenwashing. Oh, we have a green insulation. We use soy. You look into it, was it 5% soy? Like, <laughs> oh, come on. You're, you're so full of it. It's oh, full we got of a crap. We got a standard from LEED. Oh, we, LEED they, is complete crap. It's, it's just fucking crap, man. I know. I, and when I was in George Brown, we did a lot of that. A lot of building science, a lot of green, I was going to ask you about this. So you, in, in school, do you guys talk sustainability? Oh, yeah. What was the extent of the conversation? Oh. What did you guys learn uh, regarding the sustainability? Well, what we really... It was more It was more building science. It would have been like the more of the four the practices of of building a house, get the, keep the water away, watch the air, watch the vapor, and thermal would be, would be your last option. That's when it came to sustainability. But they would talk about using a uh, blown in hay for insulation, um, anything that had to be green, panels on the roof, recycled uh, slate looking tile, you know that 
It looks like slate, but it's I not. Know, it's like it's the plastic all composite. junk. Yeah. It's all composite. Stuff like that. Stuff with low VOCs, paints with. Bullshit. I mean, paint smells like paint. If you want to talk sustainability, you got to let me know where is it manufactured? Yes. Where's the raw material source from? Where is it shipped to? It's like an electric car. That all kind of connects with it. So I don't care if it shows up on site and it's going to have a zero green footprint or whatever. But to produce that product, what was entailed? Like, I don't understand. A lot of chemicals. Start telling me that shit, right? A you're, lot of you're, Your smartphone right now, there's a kid, kids, mums, whatever. Somewhere now. Digging Africa. in lithium mines right now looking for those fucking ores, right? Yeah. Oh, I know. It's disgusting. But... Oh, I know. Be, oh, gotta be green. I, uh, gotta I disagree green. with a lot of the sustainability. I'll never agree lead. I'll never agree with that shit. I've always said over and over, you want to be sustainable? Do not fucking renovate. Find an old house and bring it up to code regarding what your fixtures are, what tiling you're going to be doing, mm-hmm. but don't kill the guts of that house. I don't care about, you can fatten the house and make some more insulation in there and, and avoid protrusions of any kind of terminations and shit mm-hmm. like that. That'll be fucking green as hell. But the moment you start adding all this stupid material that doesn't work as a collective, in my opinion. No, it doesn't. You're, you're right. You're right. The way they should be building houses is airtight homes. That's the most efficient, the most sustainable, the most bang for your buck. Putting a blower door on, seeing how efficient it is. Not doing a builder blower door test where they just suck the brick flanges back and they the go, oh, builder look. board test is just the red fucking door that's I'm put on the front. You. That's well, that We're doing a test right now. Run the fan. Yeah, but they it's don't. It's not connected to anything. They don't push it both ways, though. No, I know. They just suck it. I was it, just talking to somebody on DMs about how... Um, blower he brought up blower and I was like listen in my opinion they should be part of the building code they should a be a proper builder door absolutely and I said all the buildings that I ever built I always hired a green consultant on the build to advise me on what to do yep it cost me at the max two thousand dollars for their time to be there to advise me mm-hmm. and then the blower door test you did it three times all the time and we discovered so many holes during the stages that we did tons, everything tons. and then he would educate me on the purpose behind it and I looked at that as hugely valuable clients could care less about these numbers I was so so focus on ACH. First Air house changes, we did it. Yep. We were point zero six, point zero seven. That's tight. And they were shocked because it was my first. And I was like, dude, you guys taught me about these protrusions coming out of the house, where the ledgers were on all the joist cavities. You were telling me about putting caulking in all these fucking crevices and shit. Yep. You were telling me about using membranes on certain areas. You were telling me about doing all this shit. And then we ran around with the smoke test. I still love to do a smoke test with a cigar though one day. <laughs> I would totally love to do that, right? But Smart they've got girl. the little puffer thing, you know, that's what they do. And to me, it's valuable. It's to great. the client, they don't give a oh, shit, they don't care. man. But when the energy bills come and your furnace is on 24 7 and you're realizing what's going on here, should have been a little tighter. Should have followed those penetrations. Should have followed that smoke. They don't care about light. it at that time. They don't. That's the problem though. And they care about the beauty things. They care about the beauty. They don't care about what. The actual, like I said, I'm a building science nerd when it gets into it. Thermal um, psychometrics and humidity, and it's it's the way the house. I mean, you go to you go to Europe. That's how they build. They build with big, thick mass, holds it in thermal mass like a brick wall. It's been in the sun all day. It's nice and hot, and thick assemblies, tight. Maybe an air changing unit, just because they are so tight. And those things are those things are rocking. Those are great. Consider expert plumbing and drains. When it comes to plumbing, you need someone who's not just skilled, but truly cares about the job they do. Someone like Aaron Bolin and his team at Expert Plumbing and Drains. Aaron has been in the trade for years and he's built his reputation on one thing, commitment. Commitment to his craft, his crew, and most importantly to you, the client. At Expert Plumbing and Drains, it's not just fixing pipes, it's about delivering the best possible service every single time on every single project. So whether you're dealing with a leaky faucet, a stubborn drain, or plenty of full plumbing overhaul, Aaron and his team are ready to tackle it all with skill, integrity, and a passion for excellence. Need help now? Call Expert Plumbing and Drains at 905-531-4111. That's 905-531-4111. Or visit them at www.expertplumbinganddrains.com and on social media at Expert Plumbing and Drains Canada. Experience the difference of working with a team that's dedicated to getting the job done right. Because at Expert Plumbing and Drains, your satisfaction is their top priority. You can also email Aaron directly at Aaron at expertplumbinganddrains.com. Expert Plumbing and Drains, where expertise meets care. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. I'm going up to Niagara on the lake this weekend on Saturday, Saturday? no, Sunday, 
because this guy, Daniel, I can't remember his last name, he reached out to me and I actually reached out to him too because I was watching what he was building. And he's building a kit home, like this kit from Honduras. Mm -hmm. And um, this is like green. And he's had some challenges regarding building this structure. But I watched this process on what he was doing for the foundation. So he actually dug down four feet, five feet, and uh, ICF'd it, did the foundation wall. And then all of a sudden, he put two inch XPS foam, taped it on the ground, filled it back up like a bathtub full of earth and started creating a floor mass because he's doing an earth floor. So his finished flooring is actually going to be compacted clay. Hmm. And so that mass right there by being in a, in a bathtub of foam is going to be so warm, being in which cooler. is going to continue the rest of the structure. So I said, listen, I'd love to come by and take a look. He's, he's going to have a live roof on it that transpires to the, the wall assembly. It's a curved roof that goes into the wall. Heavy. It's a kit that's three panels and ribs, and he keeps on putting it together. And then he's going to skin it on the inside with drywall and metal studs and then run another layer of insulation on the inside. And I'm like, this makes a lot of sense, dude. And he's the first one building this kit in Canada. And I said, I want to come by and take a look at this, man. That's pretty heavy. No, I mean, and he's yeah. doing it all himself. So it's taking a while. Oh, of course. And uh, I was fascinated by it. So I'm actually, I, I, I spoke to my consultant who's an educator now at Ryerson. Sweet. He's, he's been teaching for five, six years now, Greg LaBelle. I talk to him every so often. And I've had his son here as well, too. And he's an electrician. And uh, so I asked Greg if he wants to come by and check this out with me, go up there for a little road trip and, and just check it out. But I'm in awe of what he's building. Yeah, that's right? a, I mean, I, and probably being one of the first of its kind, I'm sure there's going to be some hurdles to jump through he, he had a to few figure out. yeah with the city you know he had a few little because they didn't understand it so right and i was like yeah i get it it's not the norm of what we normally would build but it's the principles are there it's yeah. totally it makes no, a lot of sense it's, right it's, you're making a cooler and the nice thing about the front what i like a lot about it is that he's actually parked the greenhouse in the front of his house so the greenhouse is part of the house so it's exposed inside of it so you already know What's that going to do? That's going to filter all that air inside that house. Oh, yeah. Having all that greenery right there. Plus, he's going to be able to year-round grow. Grow stuff. That's smart. I'm like, that's smart, in my opinion, man. And it looks beautiful on the inside and outside from the rendering that I saw. I was like, you have this little glass section there and all greenery in there. And you could put your shrubs. You could put herbs. You put all you want in there and grow it, tomatoes or whatever you want to do. And then that's just filtering the air inside the dwelling. What does that thing go for? I got to talk to him about the numbers yet. I don't, I think he's on track to build it for the same amount that you would build a standard. It's a 2,500 square foot unit and it's on track to being the same cost of building a standard subdivision, 2,500 square foot house. And I'd rather have his than, and the only thing is like, it's got round windows, it's curved. It looks a little, a little futuristic. Ornate, a little yeah, ornate, right. So yeah. it's not, it doesn't go with everybody's grain. Of course. I get it. But the science behind it makes a lot of sense, man. Yeah, so people- there's, there's ways to build it to make it look a little different. You could totally do it, but for him to pull it off as a one to start, he's an engineer. He's, he's also, I'm trying to remember, he studied engineer. Yeah, he's an engineer, so he's building it himself and doing it all himself. That's fun. That's awesome, man. I was I, impressed. I, yeah, where, where in Niagara is it? He sent me the address. It's uh, send me some of those pictures when you go by. Well, yeah, no, no, I'm I'm I want to go and check it out. I'll take a bunch of pictures and I'll yeah. talk about it. But I'm I was curious. fascinated by it, and I was like, "Listen, dude, if there's anything I could do to help out or whatever, and uh, it's it's a smart idea." I'm telling yeah. you. No, I see that to me is sustainability. Like all this greenwashing bullshit. There's there's rules, and you can't break these rules just to get. The best thing that Greg ever taught me, the building consulting guy, is the system. You have to have the complete system. You can't just put the best foam on the outside or the best sawdust compacted on the outside and then joint with tape or whatever. You can't just do that. It has to be connected to the knee bone, to the leg bone, to all. It has to be a system. Yep. And if the moment you break that system, the house fails. I'm telling you. That's how it works. That's why, that's why I hate plastic to begin with. Poly. Oh, it's got to be tight. It's got to be tight. It's got to be. And then you that go should put, be outlawed. And, then you put a code. gazillion screws through it. Yeah. So what, what, good, what good are you doing now? It should be it should the be specific science membranes that actually self-seal themselves. That's what it should be. Yeah. Yeah. It, they should all be peel and stick but, or, or fluid applied. Yeah. Like some of these commercial buildings I see, Some. I mean, once in a while, I'll stop in. Sometimes they don't let me onto their sites, but I'm like, I want to see that window detail. What are you doing here? There that is no window detail. Well, so, sometimes there are. Or some about the balcony details. Oh, God. The protrusions of structural membranes coming out God. to support that balcony. You're talking about a thermal bridge. 
Oh, yeah. How about you just grab your thermal cam and just sign, or you can put it on your phone now and just take a picture and show it. Oh, yeah. And you will see all that heat loss coming out of that friggin' structural member. I mean, and that's why I love learning new stuff, because you take a thermal camera to a regular wall, and you're watching blue, blue, blue on all the studs. And then I watched somebody in the States, or it was rent, I think it was the guy actually that had him wearing the build show. He's using those T-studs. Flat with, like, there's two studs like this on edge. And it's hollow in between, and there's just like dowels. Oh, I've seen like. those. Yeah, and yeah, you can foam in, by, in it, yeah. and you can keep it continuous yeah, yeah, yeah. with the actual insulation. Instead of having breaks everywhere, it's one continuous wall, which is why the foam is a great idea on the outside too, with OSB, not just foam. Yeah, you got to have something on. It's like putting a when you're cold, you put a blanket on. Yeah, right. So put, put the blanket on the house. Same idea. Some of these other guys I watch, they do things called monopoly framing which is nuts. Eaves and everything are added after. House goes straight up. It looks like a Monopoly house. Added after? So you have complete air sealing from up your wall to your soffit to where it breaks here on your line of your roof line. So you're doing a hot roof. You're doing a hot roof. And then you're adding, you're nailing a ledge across, adding your overhang. Adding your overhang. So you separate the two details. Completely which separate. Which makes a lot of sense. Because now you can actually seal the house, and now you're not worried about all the soffit penetration and all this stuff of venting the roof. Not a bad idea. Did you see, recently I read an article, it was actually coming from the UK, since we're putting all that foam on the outside now, because we're achieving the OBC, uh, yeah, yeah. the new art that we have to get on the outside, ants are fucking eating through that foam now. Really? Which one? The pink stuff? The blue stuff? Don't it matter. Does, it doesn't as Some long poly, as it's poly a two pound an XPS foam, and if it's got like if it's oh, it's got the black stuff on it in the inside, right? I don't know if it's black stuff. It's just the ants are discovering it and they're nesting in it, oh, so fuck. they're eating away at it, right? And and I'm like, this is a major fucking problem because if they get in there, you don't know that they're in there because they're not going to bore into your house. They're not going to bore. You're not going to see them going, hey, there's a sign here, ants are entering here. It's it's not gonna be, studs away. You'll never discover it. But the thing is, they're going to eat away all that foam as the, as the colony grows and grows and grows. And you're not aware that they're doing this. Hmm. So they're removing all that foam. And the problem is that you start putting strapping on the outside to start securing your cladding. That's going to fail. And all of a sudden, you're going to start seeing cladding just collapse and fall. Off, like you see in China or the facades of buildings just fall right off yeah no it, it makes sense so I a greenwash see. idea that's not working it's properly not working and it's it's not going to work nobody's going to follow them nobody's going to follow the rules i mean this, i mean do you think other countries follow all this carbon nonsense too but we're, we're here being punished for it got to do this got to do that it's it's garbage i see a lot of these guys actually using rock wool for what exterior exterior yeah they're putting a lot of that thick on the stuff, outside thick stuff yeah the two six inch, inch three stuff. inch four inch five inch however thick smart i don't know if the bugs will eat that it's fire it's i fire don't think it'll eat that the problem i have with that is that you have to be cautious of what your finished cladding is going to be well yeah you have right? a lot of strapping yeah that's you got why. rain screening and people don't don't factor in the extra labor costs and material costs associated with bringing that further well, out you need a fastener that's this big with, with a puck on it i think you're better off if you're going to do that you double wall the house. Yeah. That's I, it. I, you like the zip system? I'm, I'm not a fan of the zip system because it's a marketing thing. I'm, I'm a fan of, I've always been a fan of double walls. I've always been a fan of insulation is one wall, mechanical runs are a second wall. Great you're never you. protruding any of the insulation no, you're factor. Not breaking it. You're not breaking it. So all of a sudden that does what it's supposed to do. And, but you still have the freedom to run all your mechanical because every single wall has mechanical running through it. But people don't want to sacrifice that six inches of the floor space because of those walls. Well, six inches. And I'm like, it's six fucking inches, it's man. It's nothing. It's, it's nothing, nothing, right? And I, I'd rather do a double, go to Europe. There's double a reason why the windows have such a deep thermal mass. Big openings. Uh, that's how it works. That's how it works. They were, one fireplace warms up the whole structure. Or just, or just a radiant floor. Yeah. A lot of these places are with a heat pump. That's all my brother's yeah. companies do. They don't put furnaces. Well, they're plumbers, but all these houses, none of them respect for furnaces. Heat pumps and radiant floor. Well, that's the government trying to push the electrical bullshit, right? Yeah, that's, how, that's common too. Gas is great. I don't know why they want to kill it, but. I'd well, always go gas. I'd always recommend gas. It just makes more sense to me in my opinion. Um, I love the idea of running gas for barbecue, so you just, you don't do tanks anymore. Come on, my house, it's great. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I, if I have to choose, I would choose a wood burner fireplace over a gas one. But if I had, was forced to go just gas, I'll go gas. I'll never go electric. I don't care. You can no. show me as many electric fireplaces as you want. I'm like, 
it's fake boobs. I'm sorry. It's the same thing over and over. <laughs> it's like, they look great on the outside, but they don't, they don't serve function. any fucking purpose, function. right? They don't function well. It's like a baseboard heater. Yeah. Sometimes I, I do. Sometimes I do apartments for these guys. They the buy driest them. heat of all, oh, man. Dude, it's the, the most expensive too. And yeah. It doesn't do nothing. It, tri- it and trickles. You're like, you can't breathe properly. No. You sleep. You wake up in the morning. You're like, why am I so parched? Yeah, you feel like you're at the cottage. They're just dry. Well, that's how we wake up, dead from the wood stove. <laughs> Well, it's good that you're being a young guy and you're paying attention to all this shit. At least the school is having the conversation, right? Yeah, well, I'm not too sure where they're at now. I know my high school still does the program. There's, I mean, you drive around any high school around here, you'll see banners. They do specialist high schools major for communication, for tech, for all kinds of stuff. My school just happened to be the one that did construction. We had kids coming from other schools in Brampton and stuff to come do that program. Yeah, but we need more schools in different areas that are doing that same program. Yeah, yeah. And kids need to be told that, you know what, it's not, you're not a, you're not a scumbag. You're not a, you know, you don't just smoke darts and drink beer, construction work. There's a lot of guys that don't do any of that. There's guys that run offices that are complete cokeheads, but nobody knows. It doesn't <laughs> matter. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's all about, uh, it's all about how you function and what you can do. Some people, you know, they smoke a joint and their life's over. They can't do anything. They can't function. They can't do nothing like that. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's telling kids that, listen, you can, this is a great trade. Any of them. It's very rewarding. It's successful. You get to build stuff and you got skills that you could take anywhere. So why, why are, why are kids always being pushed away from it? Go to university, go get a job, go, go to an office. Well, go. universities are businesses. Well, they are. Now they're a real business. They're making right? lots of money. They're, they're a business that doesn't really guarantee a product. Which is true. Right? So it's not always a guarantee that there's going to be occupation waiting for you at the end of it. No. Trades, you know, some trades, I guess, some pre-apprenticeship programs are falling into that same way. Just the amounts of student debt associated with that or the mm-hmm. student cost, fees, or whatever you want to co- contribute to them. They're still, they're much shorter, much smaller, I mean. Um, but yeah, the education process is a business. And I think it's interesting. I just got a question. I saw that question before we started recording. Someone was asking my opinion about, does it make sense to go the union route or should I try to find an apprenticeship somewhere so I can start? My thought process is, listen, there's, there's trace people that are designed for union. Mm-hmm. And when I say they're designed for union, like you mentioned how I've got kids, I've got a wife, I got bills, I've got, I need sustainability. Then you need the union route. Yep. If you're young and you haven't started a family yet and you don't have all this responsibility, financially speaking, I think you can take a few years to risk and try to find a proper apprenticeship because I think you'll find a guy like you found where yes. they will teach you valuable lessons that the union will never teach you. Exactly. So it's like you got to figure out which is you. What my brother has the plumber, his big problem was they were taking two to one for apprentices. Two li- the ratio is bullshit. Two licensed plumbers yeah, it's bullshit. for one guy. It it's, took my it, brother four years to get an apprenticeship. It's bullshit. Four I years. think it's done by design, too, by the government. I think it's because they don't want that many people figuring out what they want to do sooner than they should be figuring out. Yeah, and it's all about who you know at the end of the day. Because my brother went to a bunch of guys that uncles ran companies, and all of a sudden, they're, they're plumbers. Yeah. And my brother's like, what's going on here? I got the, we did the same thing. We got the same qualifications. But a lot of these union companies won't let you join until you got a job with a union company. So the way it works framing is you can't just walk in there and say, I want to be a framer. It's not going to work. They're not going to take you. You have to go find a crew somewhere, go to a job site, find a guy that's going to say, yeah, you can work for me. Once he hires you, then you can go back to the union and say, look, now I got a job. They're going to give you a probation. But you did all the work. They don't care. They don't care. They want you to already be working and then join. Which, how do you jump? I go or, back to unions used to be a good idea. They ain't a good idea these days. I'm sorry. I mean, some, listen, you need guys that wake up, they work from six to two, they go home, they don't care. Yeah, those, they, those are they, those. They love that system. Those are great. Me, I'd shoot myself. I couldn't do it. I could I want to know more. I, I don't mind working until five or six if I have to. I don't care. And I want to know and know. But you need workers, though. You need guys that just show up. Don't call me after. I don't give a shit. I'm not doing it on the weekend. Not doing anything on the side. I make $45 an hour at the union. I'm good. Then you got other guys that want a little more. Attention aspiring tradespeople and entrepreneurs. Looking to break into the skilled trades or start your own home service business? Meet Trade Links Consulting, your go-to partner for success. At Trade Links Consulting, they're passionate about helping you find the right trade, 
build your business, and mentor the next generation. Whether you're exploring your options or ready to take the plunge, they offer tailored career consulting and startup guidance to get you on the right track. Visit them at www.tradelinkconsulting.ca today and book your personalized strategy session. Your future in the skilled trade starts here. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. When you went to the home show and you handed out your number to 100 people, what number were the Gaddies? Oh, I, I couldn't remember at that point. Like at the beginning, at the end? They would have been near the middle. Really, yeah? In the middle of a, yeah. So yeah. everyone was just saying no, no, well, no, they would, no. Well, they would accept them. They would take them. But nobody. No, nothing really. No, they, they weren't. They didn't really get it. Weren't you it. discouraged? Weren't you like, what the hell is wrong with these people, man? I mean, it is what it is. I'm, I'll get I'll get one. There's no way I won't find one. There's no way I took would you find. all day to go out and yeah we went. I don't. You have to you have to talk to a hundred different people. Just man. talk and talk. What are you doing? Oh, I'm going to George Brown next year. What are you studying? Where do you live? That was a big one. You have a car. You drive. I you know. Car. You have a car. You got any tools? Yeah. Yeah. So that was and then these I, are all important questions. They're man. all very important questions. Cause I got a buddy of mine that I pick up all the time. Not that I don't mind, but it's like you know when I was your age. If I didn't have a fuck car, you weren't going nowhere, boy. Nobody was you, coming you to pick you up. Work, I know. Unless you're a bricklayer. Then they kidnap you. That's <laughs> true. There's 12 of them pile out of that truck. Yeah. And I know why they do. It's yeah. because if there's a little bit of rain, us framers, and we can see it, we're going out, we're going home. He gets in his truck, I get in my truck, we leave. You see these guys huddled in the garage, waiting. waiting. Oh, it stopped. Go back out. Oh, it's back. Go back into the garage. They can't leave. They're stuck. I know. So those guys, they're not stupid either. They know how to, how to kidnap <laughs> them and keep them. But that poor guy that's got to drive them all home, that guy probably doesn't get home till 9 o'clock at night. And especially, they're probably coming from Toronto, most of them, so... Because they're far and few to find. Not everybody's going into that trade. No, very tough. That's why everybody they're, wants to be a framer. I, Everyone thinks they want to be a framer. Yeah, until you're up on the roof and the ice and you're yep. sliding away into yep. Mary Poppins with a sheet of plywood. Yeah. Or you get a bozo that stands a joist up but doesn't nail it and you go for a fucking tumble. That's our rule. If you joist stay down until they're nailed, don't stand it and turn around and say, oh, I actually got to go do this first. Because you walk on that one, boy. Like the guys, you have a couple heart attacks every once in a while and you really realize, oh, shit. Be careful. Stair openings, roof ends. Some of these overhangs are two feet Two plus feet. I gotta hang a fascia there. Look, my, like, how, how much to reach this? You have to heel hook the truss, lean out as far as you can lean, and then hopefully you got the little tacker on your stiletto or whatever, so you can just get it. Just, just, oh, just, just, get just, it. but you know the ends of that. The, the ends of those trusses are never straight, so you're gonna have to eyeball it anyway. Go down there, knock this one out, bring this one in, lift that joint up. It's, it's common. What do you? What tools? You guys are all Dewalt's, no? Uh, me, Metabo? I'm kind of a weird guy. I'm, I'm a lot of Makita. Really? For yeah. framing? Yeah, they got a great, they got a great skill saw. I mean, my first skill Did saw. You, no, you said your brother's a plumber. My brother's a plumber. Older or younger brother? Uh, older. That's why you're Maki Milwaukee, yeah. He's Milwaukee. I know, that's why you're Milwaukee. I'm Makita. You're Makita? I'm Makita. I'm a Makita. That makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. When I was a kid, I got a drill from... But then again, you're Serbian. Yeah. That's why you're Makita. Why is he... Mo no, he's Milwaukee because it's friggin' cause trade. It's, no, it's because he's a plumber. That's, yeah, that's why. why. That's all plumber stuff. But technically stuff. speaking, he would he should be Makita plumber. He's got the grippers. He's got all the... I, I know. All the, hev all the heavy plumbing tools. But that you, you got to remind him, by the way, you're Serbian. You yeah. need to be Makita. Yeah. Get some <laughs> Japanese in you, boy. No, it's... Uh, they make some good, great tools. I mean, my nail gun's a pass load. I love it. It's... Uh, Did you ever buy into the coffee maker and the cooler? The Makita ones? I almost did. I almost bought the coffee How much maker. were they? I, not much. Atlas. I think Atlas had them for like 150 bucks or something like that. <laughs> I don't, that's I, so I, worth it, I, man. Is it? I don't know about the cooler, but the coffee maker, that's pretty convenient. I mean, I just finished the project up in Tottenham. I mean, it wasn't close to home to, to go get a coffee. Yeah. But it would have been nice to, hey, boy, go make one in the back there. But the majority of trades that go get a coffee, it's just about go take a break. Yeah. That's what it's about. I'll but go if you use, got a coffee machine on site. Or go use a washroom because there is none where you're working. That's another issue. Really? With unions. Oh, God. Disgusting. That's illegal. Disgusting. It's illegal. I'm talking shit everywhere. They just and, shit and, everywhere. Well, you get one chance. As soon as the guy cleans it, that's your chance. You got about five minutes before some animal destroys that thing. Oh, you're talking about the job site. Oh, toilet. yeah. I'm talking about what, those. They just don't know how to aim or something. They just don't care. You know what they need to start doing is in those job site toilets, just put those convenience store mirrors in there. <laughs> you know, just film these people. Some of these people are just animals, man. It's disgusting. They don't give a shit. No, but Literally. Then, but then, 
Why do I got to lose a half hour of my day to go to some shitty gas station or, or a McDonald's or something and use their washroom? I was what, always what? religious about keeping mine clean, clean, oh, clean. Even to. in the, the harshest of cold days we in never, the winter months. Buddy. And you got that mountain of shit that's frozen and you can't well, pump supposed anymore. To, supposed to be heated. I know. Oh, yeah. I know. Think they're ever heated? No. The, once I discovered that frozen mountain of shit, I was like, well, how much is a heated one? All right, send me a heated one, please. Yeah. I want a heated one. Well, if I go up to the office, they got the trailers one. They got the trailer bathrooms. Yeah, oh, I know. Nice and big, boy. Which, like, yeah, yeah. Should we at a wedding or am oh, I at a job yeah, site? Legit. I know. Oh, I know. It's not, I don't know. They used to drive me nuts, but I'm not, I don't deal with them anymore, so I don't really give a shit. I get my own bathroom if I need one. I'm not relying on them. It says right on it, this is for five guys. For, or ten guys for, for an week. average for an average work week. Yeah, but it's destroyed in the first day right away, and the guy comes to clean it next week. So you guys gotta live with it for a week. I don't, for four I don't, more I don't days. Even go in it. Four Some of these days. pictures I have, I show people. They're like, "What?" I'm like, yeah, back of the seat, buddy. Yeah, I don't know what's in their diet. A lot of sardines. I don't know. <sighs> Who knows? But boy, it's rotten. <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with it no more over there. Sometimes I feel bad because it is pretty bad. But when I discover it, when I see it, I'm like, man, come back and clean this, please. Come oh, yeah. back midweek. I don't care what it costs. Come well, back. It's even simple things like, can I wash my hands somewhere? That'd be nice. I'm about to eat a sandwich. Like, I know. I've just been touching rotten shit all day. I like, know. Can I wash my hands, please? No. Just get the puddle. Well, in subdivision, you know, they pray for the stone slingers to come around so then they can just take a bunch of shit and, and then basically put the gravel right over it. And then they can ruin the, the waterproofing, too. That's <laughs> notorious. They fling rocks. They go right behind the waterproofing and it just creates a bubble in the back. <coughs> That's all. And then they just leave it. Do you think that if the builders cared more, would these bad apple trades people still do the shit that they do? They would. There's no way they would do what they do because they care more. That so they're seeing that they yeah, care about. I them. mean, I can only imagine in my grandfather's age. If you were a shoemaker, you weren't coming back. Yeah, you were not coming back. There's shoemakers everywhere now. It's disgusting, guys. Like they don't know nothing. Like they're they're putting two rafters like this side by side to to, to find the peaks. It's like what are you doing? Uh, yeah, it does work. You could and also. Why use are it. you doing it like that? Because they don't know. They don't know. They don't know what they're doing. So are they not just watching a YouTube video? At one, this one job site I was on, I could have got my mother and my girlfriend a house. Because you don't need a license to be a carpenter. You need a license to cut hair, but you don't need a license to be a carpenter. It's, it's uh, voluntary, the Red Seal. Not mandatory, not, no, com not compulsory like it is to cut hair. But to build somebody's home could just be Joe Blow. I had a couple job sites, man. Trafalgar and Dundas would be one of them. Guy I used to work with, he's up on the roof. Guy he doesn't have a clue what he's doing. Go, what are you doing up there? Man, I don't even know. It's like, oh, here we go. What then, year is he in? I have no idea. He doesn't even know what he's doing, but he's up there. He's up there. If you can hold it, if you could hold a hammer at some, at certain points when these when there was big booms, twenty fifteen ish, buddy, you could get a house. I'd see Spanish guys show up, their wife gets out of the car. And they're walking around, tight pants, picking up garbage. I'm like, what is going on here? Like, what is this? They're on the crew? I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Nobody cares. Nobody comes by and checks. Where's your working at Heights? Where's your Wemis? That only happens. These were subdivisions? These are all subdivisions. But that only happens when the ministry comes. And when the ministry comes, you go home. Because there's no... Everybody says that, man. There's no, well, you What's can't, the point? You're not going to stick around? Well, you can't... For example, to set trusses, you can't work safely. No. It's impossible. Unless you want to put a crane over my head with a hook. Scaffold around. 18 inches down from the wall platform, but you're talking 25 foot trusses. I can't even, I got to be in the middle to get that up. I can't be 18 inches down from the wall already. Yeah. It's I wanna, just. I want to do a safety show where I want to talk about that. Oh, I, I'll. I'll There's what? a bunch of shit that you can't do as you per can. rules and regs. No. You, you can't. physically can't. I mean, you could. It's going to take you a long time. And when you're working by the to piece. To set up a, a whole scaffold platform and set up all this other shit. Good luck on trying to be competitive price-wise. Oh, yeah. You can. I mean, they always call, like when we set trusses, they call for an 18-inch platform through the middle of the house. And it's, it's three two-by-sixes. You nail a block on the wall. 18-inch catwalk? Like a yeah, catwalk? Yeah, catwalk, 18 inches wide. That's what, that's what they're asking that's for? What, that's what we would use, to right through the middle of the house. Or maybe on uh, two-thirds so okay. you can have two guys walk this 
and pick the yeah, trusses it makes up sense, and move yeah. them. Can't walk on the walls. Big no no if you walk on the walls. Somebody sees you walk on the walls, they're going to lose their mind. Yeah. So you either build your catwalks like that, or you just, when they plop the stack of trusses on the roof and you start to drag them out, you walk on them. As you set one, you, well, we put our blocks. You walk on the interior walls. Yeah, on the outside too, a little bit here and there. You have to because you got to nail the trusses down. Yeah, you got to nail the trusses down. You got to totally toenail them. You got to toenail them, right? All the ends there. And then you got to hang your fascias off of that eventually too. But there is no safe way to do it. There is no safe way unless you have a crane for every guy. Unless you prefab them, you can build them on the ground. No, but and then hoist it up. Yeah, but good luck. Are your walls straight? Is everything level? Is just what your roof? You still got to pin it when you get it up there. Some guys, some guys sheet them and then go underneath and pin them. I seen small, like small garage roofs and stuff like that. Guys will build them on but the ground. But not a whole house structure. No. There's no, no way. Well, I mean, you know how many times I just picked up a stack of trusses and they just fucking exploded. It's just from the truck, from when they roll them off the truck. Oops, they roll them off the truck, or they, uh, or like the forklift doesn't see it when well, they're picking they were up just something. Mass I've, I've seen them. it plenty of times where you actually start laying them up and then you've got the uplift there. I got almost an inch here, man. Between these, like I'm pretty sure these walls are 96. Well, as far as I know. Now, what me and my buddy stopped doing is we stopped nailing our walls, our, our interior walls, to the trusses. Because I learned about truss uplift when I was in school and why things would crack around the exterior. So we use a thing called a, tru- a floater. Mm-hmm. You ever seen those truss floaters? No. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, you nail it to the, to the wall, and there's a big tab in here that's got a black, it's got a black movement. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pin that moves up and down. So you put this bracket on the wall. The truss is probably going to be an inch higher than the wall, whatever. You then you tack it right to this thing. Now, if you step on it, it's going to go like this. Really? So it'll, it'll compress it'll it. It'll truss. It'll float them. Okay. I, I can't forget what builder. This must have been Fruitland in the uh, QEW right before COVID came. There's no union work. So we went out Beamsville, that area. And yeah, this one builder said, don't nail any of these to the interior walls. Use these floaters. And now my buddy grabbed a box of them. Now, every custom he does or he wants me to help him with, we use the floaters. That's pretty smart, actually. Well, it's, it's a great, because if not, I mean, when that truss lifts, because that bottom cord is full of insulation, yeah. and that top is freezing, yeah. it's going to do this. Yeah. And if it's attached to your wall, your wall's coming up. Crack. Your wall's, or, or your, lifts your whole wall off the floor, and then you can stick your hand underneath the baseboard. So it's either because those interior walls aren't always nailed to joists. No. Sometimes they run perpendicular. They're just on ply they're just, they're, or OSB. Or some guys will put blocks underneath it if they're good. They have two feet or something. Just something to tack it into, right? Instead of just being in the plywood. But it all depends. So there's different there's w- ways of doing new stuff, but these guys don't care. Then the builders don't care. They still put tar paper on the wall before they brick. <sighs> On the exterior? Yes. Tar paper? Yes. So you're not taping any of that. You can't tape it. Tar paper doesn't do shit. It doesn't do anything. You need to... I go back to the system. It's the system that you need to frigging understand, Change. It needs right? To, it needs to be changed. Or just new... There's new ways. And I, I guess you get a lot more uplift, too, if you start doing these houses that the first floor is all opened up. No walls in the interior. Now you got a second floor that's split up to three or four bedrooms. Mm-hmm. But... That first floor is affecting that second floor, which is going to affect the trust system. It's all, it's all stacks. It's yeah. all start. That's why we would take so much time to get our first floor perfect, because then everything else is easy. Mm. The walls all touch each other. There's no fighting, no pulling braces, no beating the shit out of something with a sledgehammer, having a forklift lean on stuff to push it for you. Because sometimes it's beyond your reach. Like, you can't, you can't move stuff. We had a house in one of those subdivisions. The second floor wall was an inch and three quarters out of plumb. As the brick layer started going the up. second floor wall? So from the top of the main floor to so the top of the second the floor? the second floor rim, whatever you want to call it. Was an inch and three quarters? Out. Not in. Out. So as the brick layer started to go up. It got tight. He noticed. Well, he had and to. And there's no, there's no air gap anymore. My bricks are starting to fall off the house. On a rain day, there's about 20 guys in the house. We had, I don't, I don't even want to know, maybe 10 braces. All yanking one way, guy on the outside, two forklifts on the outside, holding an LVL at the floor, and they're tipping their forklifts against the house, and we're yanking the house inside. We got, we got the wall to about three quarters to about a half inch. Did actually, they pin the corner wrong or it actually, something? It was actually a model home. I don't know what happened. Why We didn't frame it. That's I a no huge clue. difference in eight it's feet, right? So, depend. Maybe the guy built the wall out of fucking four pieces. Some guys do that. Some guys just build small sections of walls and stand them up and just nail the studs together. And lap. Some, guy, some guys don't lap plates. 
They they're joining butt to butt? Yeah, they just toenail them. They don't even leave the pocket to lap the plate. It's, it's, it's I don't know. That's why I, I couldn't do it anymore. It was just, my, my buddy that frames for the unit, he laps all his plates. He still does it. So are, just, are they even lapping the corners? No. Maybe on their exteriors. If they're not lapping their exteriors. Those, That's a big issue. Well, man. then I got pictures of houses falling all over the place, just crumbling and oh, collapsing. Oh, man. Like sticks. Like, you go back the next day, the houses are all falling over. The old man used to say, before you leave, brace the house like you're going to have a tornado. Yeah. You used to walk up and hit the walls and shake them. No, put another yeah, one. Yeah, no, yeah, put yeah. another one. Some of these guys, they, or the window's got to go in and there's a brace in the way. So they start knocking out the braces. House isn't really finished being framed. Bricks aren't done. You come back the next day, the house is toppled. Or it's it's all janked or it's on 45 now and you lost all the all the stability all the lateral strength is just gone because maybe it was ply, uh, maybe it was foam if you have your wall too close to a window you can't put that brace in there can't no. have a brace go through the window no. so it has no lateral support three way the world these little puppies i'm speaking from experience i've actually installed these and i love these Three-way prefabricated inside drywall corner. The first one-piece solution for perfect, crisp corners every time. With three-way, you'll improve your quality, save on labor, and cut down on time. Traditional methods require three tapes, lots of sanding, and high skill. But with three-way corners, they install in just a fraction of the time with fewer steps. It is adjustable for any angle, reinforced to cover gaps, and designed to blend seamlessly into the corner. Say goodbye to pesky touch-ups and hello to flawless finishes. Try three-way today and revolutionize your drywall game. Perfect corners every time. To purchase or check out some how-to videos to see the installs in action, visit threeway.ca or connect with them at 306-514-3768 or drop them an email at threewaytheworld at gmail.com. Connect with me, TCL, and stop by the studio and get a free pack on us for anyone to try. And trust me, I'm telling you, you'll love it. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. It's just to save the cost on exterior sheathing of OSB, which is one of the cheapest materials out yeah, there. I mean, we used to build, we used to, we used to get out of the truck, like, ah, shit, mud, throw some plywood, throw some OSB, make a ramp to get in there. Now you can't do that anymore. That's like a $3,000 walkway you just put down there in the mud and then you take that wood and put it up and yeah. put it outside the house you go ah, i need a half inch so you get the 716th osb that's been outside for a bit it's kind of a half inch now it's bigger than a half yeah, inch man just, well you always got to use that to pack stuff is it it's getting worse though right because you you're like the builders need to make money i mean i haven't been on a union job site and i want to say about four or five years i will go help my buddy here and there like if i got a project to go start like we're going to do an addition and he's like man i got two days left on this roof i'm like okay i'll come help you Let's knock this out. No, let's go over this one. But I, I don't know. I could imagine it's only gotten worse. I think they've it's tricked worse. people into it, thinking you buy a million dollar house from them, and that's what a million dollars gets you. It's a joke. It's buy a, a piece of land somewhere, and you could build something way better for that price. Yeah, but it's all cost money, right? That's that's my theory on it. With a million dollars, what you buy from Madame or any of them, a, a, a subdivision, a, a town, no backyard. No driveway, no nothing. Million bucks. What for the convenience? Oh, that's nice. You send traffic for three and a half hours to go one way. No, but you drive like two hours away from the core, and you can get something gorgeous. I think something built a little better for far cheaper. Far, Everyone's just stuck in this Toronto core yeah. mindset where it's just like, here's a, here's what you get for a million dollars, right? Which is not even close because what my cousin did up in Tiny, a four thousand square foot bungalow and three and a half acres, cost less than a million bucks. I can tell you that. Gorgeous. Made it the way they wanted. Three car garages, got boats and RVs and toys. See what it's, I mean? That's what I'm saying. Why would you wanna why would you wanna fight to park in front of your house, which is what my brother's having a problem with in Hamilton, it's downtown. The laneway's yeah, pinched. The, the laneway's going. the laneway's so pinched. This guy's got a fence that's over here and this one's got a fence called the city. Oh, we don't deal with that. It's like okay, so I'm gonna build my own fence then. I'm gonna block everybody else out then. You guys don't wanna come check on it? It's 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 wild, man. You can't park in front of your house, you can't park anywhere. Or you get one car for a family of what, three, four? Like, it doesn't work. My buddy in Milton, same thing. Brand new house, one car driveway, no backyard. No backyard? Back, back to back towns. To fit as many units as possible in that area. Slam them, baby. Slam them. It's gross. Because another friend of mine was looking to buy a new house. And all he could find was one driveway and no backyard. And he was upset, man. I want a backyard. I want so what are you family. doing? Like you're opening up your back sliding door? There is no back sliding door. Your house backs right onto so another the, unit. The fence is right there? No fence. 
Really? Yeah. That's what they're building? They're building. It's just a row. I would say there's 20. It's a two double-sided street. 20 on this side, 20 on this side. And they, and they go back to back. And I framed them before. That whole wall, it's either block or it's going to be offset studs with a bunch of insulation in them and 5 eighths drywall, probably two layers. So where are the windows then on the sides? All in the front. All in the front. in the front. They're at the side because you have a neighbor on your side and your side and you got somebody in the back. You only they're get row f- houses then. They're like row houses. Yeah, exactly. Holy cow. That's not a home. Man, go, you ever driven through Milton lately? No, I haven't oh. paid attention to them. I Boy. know that in Milton, the madame has got that container ship uh, model home section thing or whatever. They, got, which, they have one of those on Ninth Line, not too far from where yeah, I'm at. Yeah, that's around they there, got right? That one there, but but that's, I think that's just the model home section. They're not building those units like no, that. No, no, no. They're just using that to sell Ninth. Yeah. That's their, their, but I'm talking go Britannia, go past uh, Bronte, go past James Snow. That's where they're building start these going up. It's all on the right-hand side. It's, uh, it's all in the... Um, so it's one building with a separating divide, like firewall between the yeah, two from all the way down the back and i'm sure somewhere holy shit every usually about every five you'll get a block wall that comes up over the roof line you'll see it in the parapet you'll see that black yeah chrome that's that's the block wall coming up because you got to separate them every so often which is actually the best house to have because if you got a bozo beside you framing who i don't know i've had this section before he framed his house a foot longer than mine but all our, all our faces had to line up at the end of it because it's a row of towns. It's not like one's in, one's out. They've got to be straight. So it's like, dude. That's you, ugly, man. You couldn't tell me that when you were laying out the floors? Now we're on the roof, and now who's going to make the adjustment? What are they selling these things for? A million bucks? Oh, yeah, eight fifty nine. How many square? Like two-story? Well, the first, floor, the, fir- the first floor doesn't exist because you walk in, you got stairs right away. You might have mechanical and maybe into your garage. First floor is a write-off. There's nothing there. You can't do anything with it. Second floor, you have a kitchen and a bathroom, maybe a dining or some type of living area. And then upstairs, two, bed, two maybe three bedroom and, and a bath. For a million bucks. That's, That's what they've tricked. They've up. tricked people. They tricked them. Let me guess. They're sustainable. Ah, fuck, who knows? Probably not. I mean, I walk in, there's... Deep, I, the, the place isn't even old. I walked in. The lock is upside down. This is a new subdivision. This is a new subdivision. The lock was upside down. My buddy goes, how do you know the lock's upside down? I go, the words are upside down. What are you talking <laughs> about? You think they make this thing with the words upside down? Like, Come on, man. He's like, well, I never noticed it. I lived here for a couple of years. I'm like, yeah, buddy. Uh, wow. me, me, I got to do the 12 questions, James. Uh, on Instagram, at Andich. Andich? Andich. Dot, uh, Andich underscore carpentry, james.andich.com, 416-577-3947. Where are you working now these days? Where's, where's the job site? Um, up in Hamilton right now. I got another. There's a commute there every day. Uh, it's not bad at all. It's not bad. It's, it's nice. Some it's of this it's nice going west. Yeah. I mean, I get on here at a uh, four drive anyways bypass. I don't get on at Winston Churchill none of that junk. Because yeah, you get all the bottle. Four oh three. Yeah, it's a joke. It's the dumbest. I think just dumbest thing ever. And then just straight up get off of York. It's uh, downtown Hamilton, so it's not too too bad. I actually got a set of stairs to do there next, and then I'm off to uh, most likely New Market to start two bathrooms. Uh, They're going to be back to back though, so it's that'll uh, be a little bit of a commute there that from is this what, area. It is what it is, man. I'm used to it. I drive everywhere. New Market, there's a lot of construction going on out there. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of space. They got a ton of space. It's not bad. Just up to 400. I mean, yeah, right I, I like I like Bass Pro anyway, so I'm sure I can it'll pull me in there and get a shot. Hunter or so. fisher, fisherman, both, 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 man. You ready for this? Do we cover everything? Oh, yeah, I think so. You want to say hello to anybody? Shout out to anybody? No. I'm good. I'm, okay. sure I'm sure they'll hear me. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite construction word or phrase? Oh, word or phrase. Word or phrase. On the money. Least favorite tool. Least favorite tool. I say a saza. That's the uh, we yeah. Call, we you call all it, you framers, well, man. You know why? It's because it's, it's a mistake. It's, it's the tool of shame. I know. When we get out in the morning, that doesn't come with us. That's not a, that's not a, that's not. You don't not, pull that out of the truck. Oh, no, 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 no. You pull that out when you fucked up. You, you've, you've, you've actually cursed that's, the day that's now. That's what you say. Go get the tool of shame. Go get it. Go cut the nails. <laughs> uh, what do you miss from your childhood? Uh, it's no responsibilities. It was nice living carefree, going to soccer, hanging out with your friends and just doing whatever. Didn't Life. Matter. Didn't matter. What construction sound do you love? Do I love? Do you love? I would say uh, one of those metabol guns, one of those. 
Chill. Do you like battery a, guy or pneumatic? Uh, mine is my pass loads gas and oh, your gas. Both. Okay, yeah. I just haven't. It's I've had it for so long. It's never broken on me. It is a bitch to buy cart or gas cartridges. Why is it a bitch? I thought everybody has them well, nowadays. Well, the other. <laughs> I go and buy three cartridges at Home Depot. I go back to the job site. They're all empty. Some bastard took three empty ones, put them back in there, and returned them. And I got them. I was so pissed. So you return them now. So then I return them. But the best part is the lady's asking me, why are you returning these? I go, do you know what these are? You know, you know what these are used for? No, I'm not sure. Then don't question. Then don't ask stop. her for a left-sided hammer. Stop with the, yeah, legit. <laughs> stop questioning me on it, lady. You don't even know what it's used for. God. <laughs> what is your favorite beverage? Ah. <sighs> Probably a Stella. I haven't had a Stella in a while. I like Stella. Yeah, those are good. Uh, what turns you on and what turns you off in construction? Uh, what turns me off is the shoddy, the shoddy workmanship and that people allow the shoddy workmanship. That's what drives me nuts because people that do it right are always getting beaten down. Yeah, they get grouped S into the bad. Especially for price. And it ain't right. And it ain't right. I know. Uh, what was the other question? What there? turns you on? Uh... Seeing progress, showing up like when I was a framer, showing up with a foundation, and four weeks later, there it is. Built. Built. Sick. Just built. You can do whatever you want, wherever you go. Favorite curse word? It's got to be fuck. <laughs> What's a good Serbian curse word? I, I don't know. It, no. when, you, uh, when you swear in Serbian, you more swear to God. It's oh, more of like a, oh. yeah, yeah, it's not they really. It goes direct, eh? Yeah, yeah, they go direct. <laughs> they go direct. It's, uh, I won't let them go on here. Uh, favorite vehicle, any mode of transportation? Favorite vehicle, probably a boat. A boat? Yeah. Particular? One's fast, fast boat. Go good, fast? Good, good fish finder. We can get, the, get on the fish good. That's Isn't that kind of cheating? No. I did that a long time ago. Went out west. Cheating. I got invited, and they're yeah. like, we're going fishing. And they would show the fish finder, and I was like, how's this fishing, man? You still got to catch them, though. I know, you may know but where they're, they're at. right there. Yeah, but what if you throw something they don't like? I threw something in there, and I caught something right away, and I was oh. like, guys, this ain't fishing. That's sick. <laughs> no, then I got sick <laughs> because the swells were 20 foot that day, <laughs> man. Holy. It was bad. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt one day? I would be a farmer. I think everybody in Canada, there should be a farming class in school. Honestly, I think I'd be a great. I love working the land. I like being out there. There, I just added it. Too. So not only do you get the kids to start woodworking and building furniture start for farming. the school, you start farming so we grow our own food so then we can eat it in the cafeteria instead of eating that over baked pizza, whatever they that make, garbage. pizza pockets or whatever shit, right? They, they might whack me, though, because uh, no GMOs on my farm. That's so what I only mean. Only the real shit. They wouldn't want, you wouldn't have pesticides. You wouldn't do any of that shit. Build a greenhouse and then build your own. That's what every high school should be doing. That's it. But call me crazy. What profession would you not like to do? Oh, I'm going to say this because a lot of my families are them, but being a police officer. It's, it's a tough uh, racket. It's, it's, well, it's changed. It's definitely changed a lot. It's, uh, I mean, my, my stepdad, my cousin, my brother, my uncle, they're all police officers. And it's just something I just, I don't know, especially with what my brother deals with now. Can't even look at somebody. You can't do nothing. He arrests somebody with a gun and he's out. 12 hours later, back this on bail. Stupid, it's a joke. He's, risk his, he's risking his life for yeah, no reason. But he's 15, 16 years deep into a pension. What's he going to do? Just walk away from it? Can't. Can't, right? And Can't. He's, he said he's been peel and halt. He goes, it's like teaching. doesn't matter where you go. It's same. all the same shit. Same, same shit. It's all politics. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at those pearly gates? That was sweet. You had that a good run. Sweet. You had a good run at I it. I like that. That was sweet. Yeah. I don't know. Thanks, James. Appreciate you making the time, man. Awesome. Appreciate you good for having me, Good to finally meet you and uh, keep up the good work, man. Absolutely. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, that's it. We're all done, man. Thanks. Ciao.